Hey there loves! This is Jane Castillo. Welcome back to my channel. So as you can observe, I haven't been able to stick with my original upload schedule which is Friday because the classes already started and now my Fridays are already dedicated in packing and preparing the modules for the distribution every week which is every Monday. Nevertheless, I'll still be here trying to find time or doing my best to find time in my jam packed schedule so that I can share my know-hows in grammar and research to all of you guys and just sharing about anything and everything that I love and I enjoy doing. So last week, I tackled the characteristics of quantitative research. This time, I am gonna tackle another topic which is related to your practical research to subject the types of quantitative research. First, let us define the term research design. Research design refers to the overall strategy that you choose in order to integrate the different components of the study in a coherent and logical way, thereby ensuring you will effectively address the research problem. Kari, Naval, and Prieto, 2017. In other words, it serves as the blueprint of the actual conduct of the research work. Choosing the appropriate research design is vital in achieving the research methods and results which are coherent to the research problem. Furthermore, quantitative methods entail the numerical or statistical analysis of data collected through survey, questionnaire, standardized tests, learners' or respondents' performance, such like. Generally, quantitative research design is classified into two, experimental and non-experimental. This topic will be discussed in two parts. In this video, I will discuss the experimental research designs and the non-experimental research designs will be presented in the video which is coming this week. So watch out for it. Experimental research is a systematic and scientific study in which the researcher manipulates or controls one or more variables and determines its or their effects on one or more variables. It is conducted in a controlled environment, hence allowing the researcher to control the situation. What causes something to occur? This is a question that guides the researcher during the research process. In this design, the cause and effect relationships between variables are tested. There are three types of experimental research design. To wit, pre-experimental, quasi-experimental, and true experimental. Pre-experimental research design has the least internal validity, and there is either no controlled group or pretest or both. It serves as a preparation or prerequisite to true experimental research design. A group or groups is are being observed to find out if a treatment or an intervention can cause change. Further, Pre-experimental research design is categorized into three types, one-shot case study, one-group pre-test post-test design, and static group comparison. In one-shot case study, only one dependent group is being studied. After it is given a treatment or an intervention, the study or research is conducted. For instance, I am conducting a research on the efficiency of video lessons as an intervention in modular distance learning. After letting my students from UMS 12 Canada watch my video lessons, this study will be conducted to identify if the intervention or if the treatment has helped them resolve their difficulties. Meanwhile, one group pretest post-test research design intermixes both pretest and post-test study by administering a test to a specific group before and after the treatment. Let's take the same sample. My UMS 12 Canada students were given an intervention. Before they watched the video lesson, they took a test, they were observed and studied, and after watching the video lesson, after the application of the treatment or the intervention, they were given another test. 
or another assessment to identify whether the treatment or the intervention has caused some changes. Moreover, steric group comparison requires two or more groups to be observed or studied, yet only one of the groups is given a treatment or intervention, and the other groups remain static. All of these groups are post-tested and their differences are recorded to keep track of the results of the intervention. For example, I am handling three classes. ABM 12 Australia, UMS 12 Belgium, and UMS 12 Canada. Only UMS 12 Canada students receive an intervention. They were the only class that I required to watch the video lessons regularly. However, ABM 12 Australia and UMS 12 Belgium are held static. After the intervention, I will run a test and the differences among the performances of each group will be considered as the results of the treatment or the intervention. Frequently asked question number one, what is the difference between pre-test and post-test study or design? If the test is conducted before the intervention, it is pre-test. If the test is carried out after the treatment, it is post-test. Additionally, if the study is done before and after the treatment or intervention, it is considered as pre-test, post-test design. Frequently asked question number two, what makes control group different from experimental group? The control group is not given an intervention, while the experimental group also called as treatment group, receives the intervention that the researcher wants to test. Yet, students, you have to take note that the control group may sometimes, may sometimes be given an intervention depending on the preference of the researcher. Moving on to the second type of pre-experimental research design, we have the quasi-experimental research design. This type is somewhat similar to true experimental, but they are not entirely the same. Cook and Campbell, 1979, stressed that although the independent variable is manipulated, the respondents are not randomly assigned to conditions or orders of conditions. The most common types of quasi-experimental research design are non-equivalent groups, pre-test, post-test design, and interrupted time series. In non-equivalent groups design, the participants are not randomly assigned to conditions. For example, you want to conduct a study to evaluate the teaching strategies employed in practical research too. Miss A's class is the treatment group and Miss B's class serves as the control group. The researcher will not be able to randomly assign the students in the classes, thereby the group is non-equivalent and notable differences would surface. Let's say parents of high-performing learners prefer Miss A to be the teacher in PR2 because she displays competence in the subject. On the other hand, Parents choose Miss B as the PR2 teacher because their child needs a more authoritative teacher in order to accomplish the research work. Next, pre-test and post-test design. I have already mentioned this earlier. There is a test before and after the application of the treatment or intervention. Then, the interrupted time series design, which is a variant of the pre-test, post-test design. This entails that a time series is being quote-unquote interrupted by a treatment or intervention. In an example cited by Cook and Campbell, 1979, the treatment which is the reduction of the work shift from 10 hours to 8 hours brought about a positive change in the employee's productivity. Interrupted time series design is similar with pre-test, post-test design, only that the former includes a series of pre-test, post-test design. Thirdly, the true experimental research design has the highest internal validity among the three. This relies on statistical analysis to prove or disprove a hypothesis. 
The true experimental research design is classified as follows post-test only control group and pre-test post-test control group. The post-test only control group design entails respondents randomly selected and assigned to control and experimental or treatment groups. After a thorough observation, both groups are post-tested to know the differences, changes, and results in these groups and derive conclusions. In the contrary, only the experimental group will be tested in the pre-test, post-test control group design. The two groups are post-tested to know the differences between the two groups. Here's an example for the post-test only control group. Let's assume I have two classes, the UMS 12 Canada and ABM 12 Australia. ABM 12 Australia will serve as the control group and UMS 12 Canada will be the experimental group. The UMS 12 Canada being the experimental group will receive the intervention. The intervention will be watching the video lesson. The UMS 12 Canada is required to watch the video lessons regularly. After the application of the intervention, both groups will be post-tested. On the other hand, in pre-test, post-test control group, the control group, once again, is ABM 12 Australia and experimental group is UMS 12 Canada. Both of these groups will undergo the pre-test, but only the experimental group, which is UMS 12 Canada, will receive the intervention. After watching the video lesson, both of the groups will be post-tested. So for the post-test only control group, there is no pre-test. But in the pre-test post-test control group, both groups shall undergo pre-test and post-test. That is the main difference between these two types. As a recap, there are two types of quantitative research design experimental and non-experimental research designs. In this video, I discussed the types of experimental research which are pre-experimental, quasi-experimental, and true experimental. Watch out for the upcoming discussion on the non-experimental research designs coming this week. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. If I was able to help you study the types of quantitative research, specifically the experimental research designs give this video a thumbs up be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of our weekly lessons thank you so much for watching till next time study well bye